name is Michael. I'm the drummer for Winter Hearth. I joined the band back in uh, 2012. Uh, was out of the band for about a year and I recently rejoined. Started playing drums back in 2000, 2003, 2002 maybe. Convinced my parents to uh, to buy me a drum set. I wasn't always into music. I was growing up. Uh, I was more into like video games and and uh, TV and stuff like that. But around. Uh, Around 2000, 2001, 2000, and I really started getting into heavy metal and punk music. And so right now I'm going to Andrews. We're gonna practice some music for the, the show. You know, like in a lot of bands, sometimes you play in empty rooms, sometimes you play in crowded rooms. But we're not the type of band who, we we try to cater to everyone, <coughs> excuse me, and not just bring our friends into a show, you know? Because, I mean, that gets boring after a while, and we always try to keep things fresh, keep things new. Started playing bass in eighth grade, maybe? Seven or eighth grade. Because my cousin brought over his brother's bass, and I was like, the fuck is that instrument? Like, that's not a guitar. Because I didn't play anything or whatever at the time. And I started playing it a little bit, and my brother and I jammed out to Black Sabbath, I think, by Black Sabbath. And yeah, I just got hooked on the bass. I was like, it was a bit different from guitar and stuff. That's kind of why I liked it. I started in, I was probably in grade five or six and my brother was home sick home, like from school that one day and my dad brought back some old tapes that he found in our grandmother's house and the two the tapes that Jesse listened to that day was Power Slave, Bar and Maiden and Led Zeppelin 4 and when I came home he showed them to me and he was like just listen to this music like you're gonna like it and he put it on and I was just blown away and just Changed my perspective on music and everything, really. Uh, probably when I heard bands like Metallica and, Ar and Iron Maiden and Megadeth, especially Iron Maiden and Megadeth, because like uh, Dave Mustaine got those kind of real fast-paced rhythms. I wasn't too much, never cared too much about being a an Ingvae Malmsteen or a Joe Satriani. Not that I don't like them, I think they're great. But but as I got older, I got into guys like Alexi Leo. Michael Amott, Bill Sturr, Max Cavalera. Um, I can't really think of any modern guys at the moment as well. When we were growing up, there wasn't a lot of good modern metal, but there was at the same time. <laughs> you know? <laughs> he actually sent me a, a demo of uh, a song that he was working on, and I was kind of like, hell yeah, what's this going to be? But right from the first riff, I was like, whoa, this is really heavy brutal stuff. Totally not what I was expecting. Just like black metal meets uh, Sepultura. <laughs> I don't know. Like, um, some songs got like a, an old school Opeth kind of vibe, like uh, Witchcraft. Uh, and then you got ones like Curse of Summer, which reminds me of like Dark Throne. And like the chapel reminds me of like Beneath the Remains era Sepultura. And a lot of Carcass too. Especially from the Necroticism days. Just this raw, raunchy uh, production. <laughs> well, I was in a band prior to this one in high school. We called 747, and it was a three piece. It was just, yeah, bass, guitar, and drums. And I did the vocals. And uh, we like split up when I was in grade 11, maybe. And me and Andrew knew each other, anyways. and. Like I brought my bass over to his house one day and we started jamming a bit and you know, got to be friends and stuff and eventually like once I did like we did separate in seven forty seven, like I just went over to his house and we were like, Man, we should try to write something or whatever and 
Yeah, we wrote like a few songs, like once I, because it was some adjustment period to playing what we used to play, which was like kind of really thrashy stuff, like Metallica system and sound and stuff, and then the transfer over and danger and his like kind of manic playing took a lot of adjustment. It's going to be a good show tonight. I hope. I mean, I'd say it will be. Yeah, man. It's all the music. It's the thing about downtown. It's like the crowds are sometimes a good crowd, sometimes a small crowd. So this is the deck. It's pretty much the center of punk rock and heavy metal here in St. John's. Played a lot of shows down here. A lot of bands come play. It's fucking awesome, man. There's so many talented bands down here. You go to any of these bars around here, you're gonna find someone that's gonna blow your mind. It's a, the amount of talent is just crazy. <laughs> Well, Winterhurst comes to mind. They're a great, great band. No, Winterhurst is the first, is the first like black thrash band that I heard here. It was fucking great, and they got some good melodic riffs, good and heavy, fast. <laughs> Local scene's pretty good, man. Some, be, some people get, you know, some people get frustrated with it, but I think it's like any scene anywhere, really. Yeah. You know, there's always going to be a good and a bad, but uh, it's a pretty good sense of community, especially down here. Awesome. Everyone we ever played with has always been super cool and super supportive. So. <coughs> Put it this way, I remember coming down to All Ages shows when I was 15, 16 years old, and the first time I saw Winter Hurt, I was like, holy shit! Like, yeah. this shit's so fucking metal, oh my god! And it like melted my face off. I had to like reattach that shit with some fucking graphic tape and all that shit. Everybody just puts their heart and soul in uh, their music, Bye. and it's so present in their performance is just incredible. It doesn't matter if you're playing fucking Foo Fighters covers, it doesn't matter if you're doing fucking Nicki Minaj covers, if you put your heart and soul into that shit, exactly. it's gonna be good. Yeah. Well, please don't do any Nicki Minaj covers. I'll blow my fucking brains out. <laughs> I guess is kind of alright. I guess if you want to listen to like Newfoundland or folk music or whatever, you can go up and down the street and it's fucking everyone's playing wagon wheel on the next every other bar. But uh, with regards to the middle scene, like it's it's get it's getting 
a bit bigger now, like it's growing a bit, but there's not a whole lot of bands that are doing what we're doing. <laughs> Satan sucking his cock and shit like that, you know. I mean, it would just get into a little box then, and the people think that's all you write about. And lo and behold, and you're the new satanic man that you're a dime a dozen then. Uh, as a whole, I like how there's so many different bands and styles, and how it's anyone who got an idea and an art can go down and play. Whereas like other parts of the world are a bit more particular. Seems lately cover music is the big thing. Which uh, I, I don't mind playing a cover show once or twice a year, you know, for an event or like a fundraiser or something. But not when it becomes your main source. It's like you're turning it into a middle age uh, bar now that like old people will come to hook up because they're divorced or desperate or diseased. <laughs> about playing in Winter Hearth is just the the aggression of the music, you know. I always wanted to be in a band like that that was just totally balls a metal, you know. I think Winter Hearth brings a strong uh, presence to the scene, you know. Winter Hearth is one of those bands that just the uh, and we go hard, you know, from first song to the end, it's just, you know. Second album? Yeah. What you can expect? A lot more songs than just the seven longer ones from first to summer for starters. Different style changes since, like, you want to hear some songs that got, like, 
Fear Factory influence, Pantera influence, like soil work influence and flames influence. The others are gonna be like Impaled Nazarene, uh, Dissection, and Rotting Christ influence. So it's a big mixture of the West and the East, I think. <laughs> Influence from bands like Machine Head and Fear Factory. Listen to a lot of like a lot of newer Boldum and El Vete. It's like a mix of North American side meets the European side. There's actually going to be scattered breakdowns of it, which is uh, I don't know how people sort of react to that one. It's a few uh, Lamb of God style riffs in there. <laughs> I really don't know how people going to advance to that. It's just we're trying something, not something different, but yeah, we're trying something different. It's, I mean, it's a different direction, but we're still going to be us, you know? <laughs> Great bands in St. John's, like the local scene. There's um, lots of punk, lots of metal bands, and uh, I think it's uh, it's a really great scene. St. John's is pretty much the only place where you can pet play that kind of music. You know, any like hard rock or anything of that nature. Remember back in. I think it was grade nine, grade eight. Uh, a lot of my buddies started learning how to play guitar. And uh, I wanted to play guitar as well, you know, I tried to learn. But uh, I remember one of my buddies, he said, hey, you know, you should you should get drums. You should be the drummer. And I just remember I'd, I'd go over to my friend's house and 
he was always playing this kind of music like it was something because I wasn't really big into rock music or any kind of music at the time but um, pretty much hearing all this music like uh, insanely heavy guitar fast drums and the, I think the vocals just crazy scream vocals is really what attracted me just uh, just really crazy really different something that like opened a whole new world of uh, of music to me and it's just you know I never look back since <laughs> 